life changing, life changing, expensive, but life changing. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be diving into kind of a controversial topic, actually. Some people out there are just not gonna be into it at all, and they're not gonna agree with it at all. And that is the topic of plastic surgery slash just cosmetic procedures in general. I'm talking about actual surgeries, like going under the knife, as well as things like filler, like lip filler and Botox and things like that, as well as other stuff like getting veneers, fake teeth, fake eyebrows, fake eyelashes. And I am going to be basically running through every single cosmetic procedure that I have ever had. And yes, I have had several. I've been very open about it with you guys pretty much every step of the way. Every time I get something done, I'm telling you guys what I'm about to do. I'm usually documenting and vlogging the process and I never, hide the things that I get done. But I do also have a lot of new subscribers and new followers who may not know about some of the stuff that I've had done. And also a lot of you guys have been asking me to give updates on some of the things that I've had done. So I actually have a list written down. Yes, there is a whole list. And I'm just gonna run through the list and give you guys like a quick synopsis of my experience with each procedure. Would I recommend it to you guys? Would I do it again? Do I regret it? And any updates that I might have with them. So starting from the top, starting from the only actual literal surgery that I have had done, which is my breast augmentation. Again, Again, I was very open about this when I had it done. I have uh, videos on my channel already about it. I vlogged the whole entire thing. Highly recommend if you guys are interested in my journey with that to just go and watch the video where I went super in depth with everything about it. Overall, I had a very good experience with getting my breast implants. Nothing crazy went wrong. I had no regrets about it. I went into it knowing what I wanted. I got what I wanted and you know, I had a good healthy experience and since since then, it's been like two, well, yeah, two years since I've got them done. And so they've definitely had time to heal and settle into place and stuff like that. So my update is really no update. I still love them. I love them even more as they were healing, as they settled and softened up and, you know, got into their final form. And I have no regrets. I don't feel like I should have gotten a bigger size or a smaller size or anything like that. I think my surgeon did a great job. I've never had any health the complications or anything that I think is tied to them. Again, if you want to know all the specs and the details and my whole entire experience with it, you can go and watch that video. I will link all the videos down below because I have corresponding videos for almost everything that I have had done. Yeah, overall, I think people would just kind of want to know like, have I had any health issues? Like anything gone wrong? Am I going to have to like get them revised or redone? No, like I think they're perfect. I do still have visible scarring. It's just right under the fold underneath where you really can't see it anyway. But if you are at a weird angle and looking all up under my under boob, there is still a visible scar. One side healed a little bit better than the other side in terms of like the scar fading, but I just am very, very scar prone. Like my skin is so easily scarred and everything will always leave like a dark scar and it's so hard for me to get rid of any type of scar. So I pretty much expected that I was gonna have, you know, a visible scar for a long time. I can do certain treatments to try and lighten the scar, but honestly, I just really don't care because nobody Nobody ever sees it like it's not visible so other than that like I'm so glad that I did it I still love them I still think they fit my shape and I have actually recommended it like I have had friends who have asked me like hey I'm interested in getting this done like what was your experience do you think I should do it and I'm like yeah go for it if you want it and you know what you want and you've done your research and you're gonna go to a good reputable surgeon I say go for it because for me it was a smooth experience. Eventually, I know as the years pass, I may have to get them taken out for whatever reason or redone for whatever reason. It's not a complete permanent lifelong thing because it is a foreign object. It is an implant in your body. Also, I think there's like a misconception that like every five years you have to get them redone. Every 10 years you have to get them redone. You don't have to. It depends on person to person. Some people have their implants in for 10 years and they're completely fine and they don't ever have to do anything with it. Some people choose to take them out for whatever reason. Some people feel like it no longer fits their body shape, like as they lose or gain weight. So it's a lot of factors that, you know, might come into play in the future and I might have to do some adjustments and 
I'm fine with that. That's my thoughts on boob jobs. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about, which is actually my first ever thing. I got my boobs done in 2018. This next thing I'm about to talk about, I actually got done in 2014. It was the first ever cosmetic thing I ever had done and that is my veneers, my teeth, my fake teeth, <laughs> my porcelain veneers. So from the jump, I had problems with my teeth. They were spaced out, they were gappy, they were like just small and it just, uh, so many things I did not like about my natural smile. So it started off with me getting braces and then having to get a permanent retainer and then having to get the gum surgery where they cut your gums back. Cause like when you have, your, your gums are low down on your teeth and your teeth look super small and you have like a gummy smile. I had that and just several things leading up to me finally being able to get veneers. I begged my parents for so long because they're super expensive. I think like a good estimate is like a thousand dollars per tooth and I was young at the time and broke and couldn't pay for myself to get it so I was asking my parents to pay for it and because it is like a cosmetic thing it's not really like covered by insurance don't quote me on that but for me it wasn't finally when I was in college in 2014 they gifted me with a set of four veneers, no, six, six veneers. So my top front six teeth, I got veneers. And yes, they, I got the, I don't know what the technical name of it, but like the regular porcelain veneers where yes, they drill your teeth down into little nubs and then they put the fake tooth on top or whatever. I really felt so much more confident with my new teeth. But when I smile, you can really see 10 teeth are showing, like my top 10 teeth show through my smile and I only had six teeth done. So the other two teeth on either side just looked weird. Like it just looked out of place, like they didn't match. I decided that I wanted to get those other two teeth on the side done as well, just so that it would fully fill up my smile. So this tooth, all the way to this tooth. I only had it up to my um, canines at first. So it was just kind of like an abrupt stop, like you could tell, and it just didn't look good. Like if you look back on old pictures and old videos, it's like noticeable. So when I started making my own money and started you know, being able to afford it, I was like, okay, I am going to pay for my own additional veneers on either side. So I think, like I said, that was in like 2016, 2017, I got these two added on on each side. Overall, like not super painful, nothing crazy happened. It's a pretty straightforward process. They do have to drill your teeth down. I think that's the scariest thing is knowing that your natural teeth are gone forever. Now they do have other types of veneers that you can get where you don't have to shave your teeth down or they only have to shave your teeth down a little bit. Like there's different versions of it. For me and what my dentist recommended, I did. So the scariest thing about it was knowing that my natural teeth were going to be gone forever. And if for some reason my veneer fell off or broke off or something, I was only gonna have a little weird little nub, but they're not made to fall off, okay? They're not like just glued on with super glue. They are cemented into your mouth. So yeah, I feel like my dentist did really good quality work. A lot of times people don't even know that I have veneers. I think it's a pretty natural effect that I was able to achieve. I'm looking in the mirror right now because I'm like, it's kind of a tie between my veneers and my boobs. Huge confidence boosters, huge, like my most favorite thing that I ever did for myself, like because it was something that I was so, so, so self-conscious of. So to get it fixed and to get like a quality result, life-changing, life-changing, expensive but life-changing. The next thing that I wanna talk about, I don't know if it really even counts as a cosmetic procedure or a cosmetic thing, because for me, I think it would be more of like a medical thing, but I wanna talk about the fact that I went on Accutane. It's like a last resort medication when you have like really, really severe acne and you've tried everything, you can get prescribed Accutane. So those of you who have been following me know that I went on this, I don't even wanna talk about it, my traumatizing experience with having severe acne. I have so many videos on my channel about my acne and the different things that I tried and my different skincare routines and it got a little bit better, but then it got way worse. Then I finally started Accutane and I documented that whole entire journey. So again, I will have tons of videos and playlists and stuff linked down below so you guys can get like the true, true details on it. Long story short, Accutane was 
an annoying process. It dries your face out. It sometimes make your, makes your acne worse before it gets better. It dries your lips out. Your lips are literally falling off your face. You have to be super careful with when you're taking it because like you have to be, it's just, it's a lot to be on that medication. And I had to be on it for about, I think it was like six months, but it worked. It really worked. My skin was so bad and it really cleared up my skin. And for the next year after I was done taking it, my skin was really clear. I had never had skin like that. The last time I had skin like that was before I hit puberty. Literally, it's been 10 plus years since I seen my face like that and it was life changing once again. Now the only thing is, and this is what I was afraid of, some people do say when you have that really severe, really persistent acne, Accutane is really only gonna be a temporary fix. Like it might clear up your skin and your skin might be clear for like a year or two after and then your acne is gonna come back. And sometimes your acne comes back even worse than before. Highly varies from person to person. As of the past, couple of months and especially literally right now i am starting to break out again you guys i don't even want to i'm scared to even speak on it and like put that out in the universe but like y'all can probably even see through my makeup right now like i i'm breaking out and i think for me it's mostly diet related stress related there's there's a lot of other factors at play here i'm in the process of kind of trying to figure it out and calm it down and like it's okay we'll, we'll get it together but i'm like Oh my God, I hope I don't have to do another round of Accutane because that was like the only thing that worked for me. Would I do it again if I have to? Yes, I don't want to, but if it comes down to my skin getting really bad again, I'm gonna do it again. Okay, now let's start talking about some of the other smaller things that I've had done that maybe not all of you even know that I've had all these different things done. Starting number one with lip filler. I have gotten lip filler. The first time that I got it done, I think was 2017. And I believe, I don't think I vlogged it the very first time I had it done. I think I vlogged it the second time when I went back in for like a refill. With anything like this, I have to go to the top rated person. I have have to go to the best of the best because that eliminates a lot of stress and um, risk in my mind because when things go wrong you trace it back to like hey were you trying to get a deal were you trying to go somewhere cheap were you going to someone who didn't have much experience that's when you're gonna have problems with all this type of stuff so I always look for like the top rated person in my city went for the first time in 2017 just to kind of add a little bit of extra volume to my top lip I'll show before and after pictures basically Basically, I didn't have like small lips, but I just felt like my top lip was smaller and thinner in comparison to the bottom lip. And I just really like the look when the lips are more like equal in size and just like more round and pouty and just, I just like that look. And I was always overlining my lips and it was starting to look a little bit crazy because the overlining was like visible and it was like, girl, like you're clearly overlining, like we see that line. So got it done, loved it, but filler does not last forever. It's a temporary thing. You have to get it done like I would say like once a year once every six months um, so I went back the next year in 2018 that's when I vlogged it and I got it redone loved it once again and then I can't remember if I got it redone again in 2019 but the most recent time that I got it done was this year um, this past August so just like a few months ago and I just asked for the same thing every time just like mostly focusing in the middle of my top lip give me that like bigger top lip powderier look sometimes she puts a little bit in the bottom just to make sure it's even nothing too crazy i'm not going from like thin lips to huge lips it's just like a shape adjustment and i love it and to me it's worth it another thing that i've had done several times and do plan on continuing to get done is smile line slash cheek filler so smile lines those are the creases right here when you smile but for me I naturally have those creases and those wrinkles even when I'm just relaxing my face and they're really in my mind shouldn't be, not shouldn't be, but I don't like there to be that wrinkle there. Like when I'm smiling, like, yeah, but like this, like I don't want those big creases right there. So I started getting smile line filler around the same time that I started getting lip filler. I originally went to a different place and he was like, oh, you're so young, like you don't need it. Like I'm just, he wouldn't listen to what I wanted. And he was like, no, I'm just gonna do like a tiny bit. So he put in like the tiniest bit of like unnoticeable filler. And I was like, this was a waste of my time. It didn't make a difference. But then I went to the same lady who does my lips, who I love. And she was like, okay, I see what you're talking about. 
let me hook you up. She was like, what you actually need is a combination of filler directly in the lines, but also some filler in the apples of your cheeks to help lift it up. And you want the volume to be here and not like, I don't know. She knew exactly what I was talking about. Again, pros of going to someone who is top rated. So she puts filler right in the lines, but then puts filler right in the apples of my cheeks. And it just kind of makes my face look how I want it to look when my face is relaxed. But the other thing that I realized is that I actually have melasma right there in my smile lines, which is basically dark marks on the face. And usually with melasma, it's very like symmetrical. So I have like this dark stain right there. So it makes it look like I have a shadow or a wrinkle right there, even when it's filled with filler, which is so annoying because it's like, it's filled and it's smooth and there shouldn't be a wrinkle there, but it looks like there's a wrinkle there because I have a wrinkle basically drawn onto my skin with melasma. There are treatments for melasma. Um, there's topical treatments, there's laser treatments. I haven't gone too deep into that. Um, when I have makeup on though, it covers it and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. When I don't have makeup, that's when I just still get a little self-conscious about it. It's just a little, it's just one of those weird things that I notice about myself. That's really not a big deal. I've had filler there for that reason. The next type of filler that was a more recent thing that I tried, I think it was last year. I only got it done once was under eye filler. So you know how people have under eye bags or like that crease or that indentation in your tear troughs. In one of my vlogs, I show the process of my mom getting this done and I didn't get it done that day, but later on after I decided I wanted to try it for myself. So I have had that done once. I think that was over a year ago now. So I don't know if the results are even still in my face and honestly that was one thing that i didn't really notice a huge difference with i think more for me it's not like a crease or a wrinkle it's more of just the coloration i have genetic dark circles um, i don't really have like a deep inset or anything but it's just a dark color so again as long as i kind of can cover it with makeup i'm fine i don't really feel like i need filler because the filler does not help with the color i guess that's why i was like well i guess i didn't really need to do that so i haven't gotten it redone and i probably won't do that one again and that's really it i haven't done like jawline filler shaping i haven't done any of that like liquid nose job filler in your nose um, i haven't done chin or anything else like that. What I have done though is Botox, which is you know a little bit different than filler. We know that Botox is more for wrinkle prevention and wrinkle, put a stop to your wrinkles. And it's always recommended as a preventative thing. So even though I'm not an old wrinkly lady, I got Botox to prevent the wrinkles from setting into my face that were starting to form. Because I guess, you know, I'm an expressive person and I do get, these, these horizontal, I think these are called bunny lines, those wrinkles pop up right here. And I was starting to get like a lasting line right there. Also the horizontal lines from going like this. It's, I guess it's all from squinting. Maybe I need glasses instead of Botox, but I got Botox all in my forehead for that. And that was like a wild experience. I only ever got it done once so far. I actually need, like really need to go get it touched up, but it like, Paraly not paralyzes, but it stops you from being able to create those wrinkles. So when I had it done, I could still lift up my eyebrows. Like I could still make the same faces, but when I made those faces, it didn't wrinkle up my skin. It would be still like smooth right here. And my forehead would still be smooth when I went like this. And that was so crazy because it was like such a huge difference. Um, so I was like, okay, I see why people do this now because if you're not able to wrinkle up your skin, then your skin will not get wrinkled up and you won't get wrinkled. So I'm like, okay, this makes sense. Like I, I see it like literally works, um, but you have to keep up with it, it wears off. So now you can see I am able to wrinkle up my forehead. So I need to go back in for another session. If I don't, then that just means that as I get older, I'm gonna have these lines on my face, which I don't necessarily want. Or I would like to age gracefully. I would like to slowly start having wrinkles as I get much, much older. I don't wanna have deep wrinkles in my 30s and i think that's like a common misconception with young people getting botox everyone's like you're young you don't need that you don't have wrinkles it's not because i have wrinkles it's because i don't want wrinkles so that's another one that like i definitely saw the results i definitely see that it like really works um but you just have to keep up with it so would i do it again yes am i planning to do it again yes i actually just reminded myself and i'm like let me go ahead and uh 
call my girl right now and make an appointment. And the last cosmetic procedure that I wanna talk about is eyebrow microblading, which is eyebrow tattooing. It is permanent makeup. Back in the day, they used to just like draw them on, like thick lines or whatever, completely filled in. Nowadays, they have different tools and different techniques where they can literally draw on little tiny realistic looking hair strokes. Um, there's different styles of it. You can get an ombre brow, which does give you more of a makeup look, or you can get the, the traditional fluffy microblading, which is what I have always gotten. I've gone to three different places over the years to get my eyebrows done, because I've had my eyebrows done and then touched up and then redone probably five or six times. I started getting it done, I wanna say in 2016 or 2017, the first place that I went to was very, very expensive and not worth the price because back then it was still a new thing and people in my area just weren't experts on it. And so I felt like the person I went to was still very new to it, but they were charging a lot and they didn't really do a great job. So I was like, mm, let me try somewhere else. So then I started going to the same place where I get my lips done because I love those people and I had a much better experience there. Again, this is a very top rated place. Shout out to Body Tonic, by the way. I go to Gina for my lips and then there's other uh, nurses. Is it called a nurse? I always forget what is, an, not an esthetician. Anyways, Body Tonic. If you're in the Austin area, I highly recommend Body Tonic. I'll put their info down below. So that's where I went when I was like, Oh, I don't really like this other place. Let me go to Body Tonic because they do microblading as well. Had a great experience there. My mom got hers done there, loved them. And then more recently, I found a place that was closer to my house. And I was like, okay, this is a little bit more convenient. Let me just try it because they have good reviews. The first time that I went, I was like, oh, this is great. I feel like she does just as good of a job as Body Tonic. So I was like, this is perfect. They're closer to my house, whatever. She did a perfect job the first time, but then it was time for me to go in and get a touch up. And that was my most recent time that I've had this done. And this time ugh, it didn't really quite come out right. So said all that to say, my thing with eyebrow microblading is that it is a tattoo because it's on your face and it's more of a superficial tattoo on the outer layers of your skin. It fades a lot faster than a normal tattoo on your arm or whatever. So you're not completely locked in, but you're locked in for like at least a year, if not longer. Otherwise you have to go and get like laser treatments and stuff to remove it, which is a big pain. You have to be super, super careful about who you go to. Do your research. You need to see their their gallery, their portfolio of pictures of before and after. Make sure that you trust this person because tattooing is an art form and tattooing eyebrows on somebody's face is even more so of an art form because you have to know about how the symmetry and how it's gonna frame your face and it just takes a lot of skill. And it's a tattoo and it's on your face. I've had, you know, hit or miss experiences with it. Um, right now, I'm kind of in the middle of a miss moment and I'm waiting for it to fade and I'm using makeup in the meantime to camouflage it, but it's kind of annoying because when I don't have makeup on, I'm like, ugh, my eyebrows don't look great. Mm. Would I recommend it overall? Overall, the general idea of it, I love it because my natural eyebrows do not grow in the way that I want them to grow in. So I love the idea of having them just be permanently tattooed on my face, wake up, good to go, don't have to put on any makeup, don't have to worry about it. When I've had them done really well, I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Highly recommend it. Recommended my mom to do it. She loved it, told my friends about it, they loved it. But when it's not done right, it's super annoying. So it's just, it's like a 50-50 thing. I will probably eventually go back and get them redone because it's also kind of addicting. I know what it feels like to have them done really well and it was amazing. So I'm kind of chasing that high. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, those are all of the cosmetic procedures, all the work that I've had done. But I do want to give one last little disclaimer. Just because I have mostly had good experiences with everything doesn't mean that all these things are necessarily 100% safe or 100% effective or that you might not have a bad experience with it. There is a positive and a negative side. There are pros and cons to anything when it comes to actual surgeries or fillers or anything like that. You need to do your research. You need to be aware of the risks. You need to be aware of other people's horror stories. Like I said, make sure you're going to top rated people to get stuff done. Don't be cheap with it. Don't like, you need to be careful. 
I think the reason why I have had mostly good experiences is because I do a lot of research and I always go to a top rated person and I always look at before and afters and I always hear testimonials of other people first. So I just try to be super careful. So I just wanna urge you guys, no matter what you're getting done or thinking about getting done, be careful and be aware of the risks. I don't wanna sit up here and like glorify cosmetic procedures because I know that there is a dark side to it as well. And also I've said this before several times, but when it comes to getting stuff done or altering your body in any way, it's your body, it's your choice. You do it for you. Nobody else can tell you what to do or not do if you are a grown person paying for it yourself. Your body, your choice, my body, my choice. And I think we all need to be respectful of that and not judge other people. Having said all that, comment down below if there was anything that you heard in this video that surprised you. Was there any work that I've had done that you didn't know that I had done and it kind of surprised you? I'm very curious to know. But yeah, that's all I have for this video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.